chairman of the presidency of Bosnia and Herzegovina for the statement he just made, and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Monaco to introduce an address by the head of state. Merci, Madame la Vice. Thank you, Madam Vice President. I have the honor to introduce the statement by His Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco. Monsieur le Président de la... Mr. President of the General Assembly, Mr. Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the commemoration of the 75th anniversary of the United Nations is not taking place as the sort of celebration that we have wanted. The COVID-19 pandemic is ongoing, and I endorse all of the words in the declaration that we have just adopted to ensure that the 21st of September 2020 will mark the beginning of a new age for the UN. Today, now more than ever, the well-being of peoples needs to be the foundation of the action of our peoples. However, it must be noted that the poorest are still those paying the highest price, regardless of their circumstances, conflict, natural disasters or pandemics, and regardless of the level of development of our societies. Faithful to its tradition of solidarity, the Principality of Monaco will mobilise for the most vulnerable. This solidarity takes the form of strengthening social protection measures at the national level and by increasing our international cooperation in the face of the severe current public health situation. International relations reflect the state of human relations. I am convinced that our personal fulfilment as well as that of our societies depends on our relationships with one another. Multilateralism is not just a concept or a promise. It is, above all, a way to support one another, to support one another's progress and to prevent and resolve our conflicts and to enrich our debates so that we can resolutely march towards the path laid out by the SDGs, the Paris Climate Agreement or the Global Compact for Safe Migration. For 75 years, we have together overcome many challenges and strengthened international law to build a safer, more just world. However, we must not deny the fact that structural reforms are urgent and needed so that we do not betray our commitments to future generations. Among the measures taken to save lives and maintain social cohesion, these must now be followed by courageous decisions to reform the United Nations. The pandemic has demonstrated how interdependent we are and also how vulnerable we are. When one of us is weakened, we are all weakened, and ignoring our weakness would be to ignore our responsibilities as heads of state and government. We must prepare to face other public health crises, but it is important that we overcome this crisis without letting up on our efforts to overcome the environmental crises, in particular the already dramatic consequences of climate change. We are merely a fragile species among many others on the planet that has been laid low by our other abuses. These will contribute to many extinctions, possibly including our own. It is incumbent upon us to ensure that all children, girls and boys, have equal access to education, to healthcare systems and to healthy nutrition. We must involve young people around the world in outlining and implementing our policies because education is the cornerstone of sustainable development and of making a success of our societal models. This fundamental right cannot be trampled by ongoing conflicts, public health crises or a lack of respect for human rights, in particular those of women and girls. Let us demonstrate to our peoples that we know how to work hand in hand and that we will be able to restore confidence in international institutions that we built and developed together over the years. Our unity is a necessity. Let us show solidarity and determination to ensure that the UN continues to be the driver of multilateralism in this 21st century. Thank you for your attention. I wish to thank His, His Serene Highness, Prince Albert II of Monaco, for a statement he just made, and now give the floor to the distinguished representative of the Republic.